Hey everyone, this is Mark for the Gun Guy channel, and today we are going to take a look at a gun that is not getting a ton of love online, and that is the CZ P09C Nocturne, which in music at least means a composition inspired by or invocative of the night. And when we look at this gun, you'll be able to see why they call it that, because remember, even a P07 that is pure in heart and shoots straight in the light may become an optics-ready nocturne when the wolfbane blooms and the moon is full and bright. Okay, nothing to do with the gun, but I do love old werewolf movies. So we're gonna take a look at the CZ P09C Nocturne right after this. So hey everyone, today we are going to be taking a look at the P09C Nocturne, which is replacing the P07 in the CZ line. And now before we get into that, if you've been watching our videos, if you like them, please remember to subscribe and uh, get notifications. That way you can always just uh, know when we're going to release new videos. Also, if you don't like all the uh, talking that we're going to do about the history and the background of the gun, remember uh, we always mark our chapters so you can just skip ahead and jump right to the unboxing and the meat and potatoes, if you will, of the segment. But before we get into any of that, we need to discuss the large pink elephant in the room. And that is, I bought this gun uh, right after it was released. I was super excited about it. And I cannot possibly tell you um, how bummed I was when I saw that this gun was, was kind of getting a lot of hate online, right? And it was principally due to some reliability issues, which seemed really strange to me because CZ, uh, much like Glock, you, you know, uh, is known for their reliable weapons. I've always loved CZ. I've always had great experiences with CZ. Uh, one of my first carries was actually a CZ 2075 Rami, which uh, is no longer made, unfortunately. Uh, but I had a certain pride in these Czech guns because my grandfather was actually born about 50 miles west of the current CZ headquarters uh, in a little town. I'm about to start destroying a whole bunch of Czech words, by the way, uh, in a little town called Velka Bilovica. Uh, so, you know, being part Czech, I really had a lot of uh, pride that a Czech company was putting out high quality guns. But after I had already bought the gun and started watching some of the video reviews online, um, it became apparent that there were certain reliability issues. And, and some of the reviewers uh, specifically, I don't know if you've, you've seen the video or not, but if, if not, you can, you can certainly jump over to his YouTube channel and he's got you know, a, a ton of great information there, but Honest Outlaw was really having a lot of problems with this gun and he had a red dot on it because obviously one of the big selling points of this particular gun is that it comes optic ready. And uh, you know some of the other reviewers as well that, that I genuinely respect their opinions, um, they were having major issues with failure to feed. Uh, and I was kind of bummed, like I said, but I took my gun to the range. I had not put optics on it yet. And I shot it and I was having zero problems with it whatsoever. It, it ate everything. I fed it, shot beautifully. Um, so I, I was kind of like, you know what, I'm going to leave this alone and, and let the uh, internet gods work it out. So I'm going to leave it alone like a zit, and sure enough, just like a zit, it popped on its own. I'm a zit. Get it? It seems to be that, that some people with a lot more gunsmithing knowledge than myself discovered that it has to do with the length of the screws and the optics, and specifically on the right side. If the screw is a little bit too long, it will interfere with the extractor, which will cause a failure to feed. And so to fix this problem, uh, what they do is they grind down that right side screw a bit, really more of a screw problem than it is a gun problem. Anyhow, if you, uh, 
YouTube, do a YouTube search for how to fix that and how to mount optics on the CZ, uh, you'll get uh, now a ton of information on how to do that. And given that that fix is out there, uh, now people don't seem to be having the same reliability issues that they were. So now that we've got that all done, uh, let's get into uh, the history of the company that makes the gun that we are about to unbox. Uh, then we're also going to take it to the range, see how it shoots, and uh, we'll do a follow-up video actually where we do put a, a red dot on this gun and uh, I'll show you how to correct the problems. That'll be a separate video just because this is going to uh, probably be a pretty long one in and of itself. So, for those of you who do not like the background, any coutrements, if you will, you go ahead and skip to the unboxing. But for the rest of us, let's get into the history of Czech firearms. Uh, again, warning label. Uh, I'm going to destroy the pronunciation of almost every single Czech word that I try to say. So, uh, Grandfather, please forgive me. So the history of Czech guns is also kind of complicated, in large part due to the German occupation during World War II, as well as the industry being nationalized and controlled by the Soviets uh, during the Cold War and in the pre-Velvet Revolution. In the early 1900s, there were many small firearms companies uh, in the newly formed Czechoslovakia. And Czechoslovakia was basically formed post-World War I in 1918 by combining the provinces of Bohemia, Moravia, and Slovakia. At that time, uh, there were pretty much two major gun companies. There was, flub number one, Zabrovokabno, uh, a.k.a. Bruno. So that's what we're going to call it for the rest of this video, just Bruno. And we will put how you spell it in the video so you can look it up and tell me how I got it wrong. And the second is CZ, which is Czeska Provka, which basically means Czech Armory. And Bruno was established in the city of Bruno in 1918. And at the time, that was the second biggest city in Czechoslovakia. And what they had done was they took some of the Austria and Hungarian workshops and they converted them into modern firearm manufacturing plants, which were owned by the state. Now, this particular plant produced some very famous jet guns, including the VZ-24 and the VZ-26 machine guns. By the way, throughout the course of Czech history, you'll see CZ and VZ. And as a very general rule, uh, whenever you see a VZ in front of a numbered uh, model gun, that refers to the fact that it was accepted and used by the Czech military. Um, and the gun itself, the number, in this case, you know, 24 and 26, as a general rule, refers to not the year that the gun was released, but the year that the development of the gun was finished. Complete side note, we're going to get back to the other uh, company and me destroying some of the other words. So around the same time, CZ was established in 1919 as the South Bohemian Firearms Company in Strakonitsta, which is in Bohemia near the German border. Then in 1922, it merged with some other companies and it was renamed CZ, uh, Czeska Brovka Prasi which basically means, uh, in some language I just invented, Czech Firearms Company of Prague. And at that time, they didn't just produce guns, but they also produced bikes and motorcycles, which is kind of neat. And if you look through history, you can see that you could actually buy a motorcycle with the CZ logo. And then around 1936, they decided that this gun manufacturing plant was probably a hair too close to Germany for anyone's comfort. Ooh, that's a bingo! <laughs> so what they did was they moved it uh, to the southern portion of the state and they moved it to Uhersky Brot. And at this time, all of the major firearms manufacturers were still independent. That would change, however, 
as soon as the Nazis invaded with World War II. And during the entire period of World War II until the liberation, gun manufacturing and firearms manufacturing in Czechoslovakia was basically under Nazi German control. Then after World War II in 1946, the firearms companies became nationalized. And this preceded even the communist takeover, which happened in 1948. However, in 1948, under the Soviet control, all of these companies were forced to work together. And there was just genuinely no rhyme or reason uh, with the guns made during this period. So the logos and the markings on the guns really didn't tell you much about them. Uh, with the exception that they had three letter logos that would tell you not which company made that, but actually which factory the gun was produced in. So there was a CZ in Strakonais, uh, which had RID stamped on the barrels. There was a CZ in Uhrski Brot, which had SHE stamped on the barrels. And there was yet a third major company, Zabrokavno, uh, Bruno, and that was the company that was based in Bruno, and that had TGF stamped on the barrels. So regardless of what logo may have appeared on these guns, uh, the only thing that you could actually tell is what factory kicked them out. Because the Soviets basically didn't care who developed the guns, uh, they just wanted to get them produced for their military. Then enter the Velvet Revolution in 1989, which occurred between November 17th and uh, the 28th. So we're coming up on the anniversary. And basically what this led to was a nonviolent transition of power that ended the 41 year old communist party rule in Czechoslovakia. And it would eventually lead to the creation of the two separate republics on December 31st, 1992. And those two republics would be the uh, Czech Republic and the Republic of Slovakia. And at that time, uh, the different companies started to experience a little bit of freedom. So they began, uh, arguing or fighting, if you will, over different logos and designs. And uh, the gun that we are talking about uh, is made by the CZ, which is in Uhersky Brot, and uh, it wound up with the current CZ logo. Now, it also absorbed one of the other major companies, which went bankrupt, and that was Zabrakovno, um, which was the company in Bruno. Anyhow. Uh, now that I have uh, destroyed that, and hopefully the maps and the graphics has helped make me not look like a complete idiot, let's take a look at what's in the box from the company CZ from Uhersky Brot. So let's get to the unboxing. The first thing that you might notice if you've had other CZs um, is that it's a different box. Uh, kind of looks cool. So there we go. Um, in regard to what we get, we get an ATF notice. We get two back straps, uh, which I already swapped out the large, but we'll go ahead and show you how to do that. You get the CZ manual and registration card. Uh, they give you a cleaning kit for this specific gun. This gun comes with two 15-round uh, magazines. There is also a lock. And uh, these two items are kind of neat. So it comes with snap caps built in. Uh, now I already put a snap cap in this because I, I had shot with it, but it also comes with snap caps if you need it. And the reason that it comes with snap caps, and I did not know this until I, I started going, why would they put snap caps uh, in with a brand new gun, is this particular part of the gun right here, which is the roller pin, uh, will tend to break and shatter if you continuously dry fire a CZ without a snap cap in it. So that's why they put the snap cap in there. And this is also kind of a neat item that I did not uh, know why it was here, but it has to do with the Omega trigger. So this particular version of, of the uh, gun, the P09C Nocturne, is double action, single action, and this version comes equipped with a decocker. Oops, and we will clear the gun. It's 
nothing in there. Uh, anyhow, so this is a decocker. If you do not want the decocker, the Omega trigger system, which this is a part of, allows you to remove the decocker and turn this into a safety, which would then be like carrying a 1911. You could carry it cocked and locked if you wanted. Sir, it is the private's duty to inform the senior drill instructor that Private Pyle has a full magazine and is locked and loaded, sir! Uh, that is not my preference. So uh, outside of getting bored one day and deciding to experiment, this will probably stay in plastic for the rest of its life. Anyhow, uh, that is the basic unboxing. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep the one magazine with the snap cap and we're going to make all of the rest of this, except the back straps, go away. Poof. All right. So um, this does come with three sets of back straps. And the small uh, was on here originally. I, I put the large on. And uh, the reason being, and again, you know, gun is clear, uh, that when it breaks, if you can see, it, it's, it breaks all the way back and, and because the hand is sitting up so far it, it was really awkward for me uh, and the way that you change out these back straps is there's a lanyard right here which is kind of annoying uh, be careful uh, when you slam the magazine in otherwise you you will bang the heck out of your hand and i do understand that there are aftermarket parts that you can uh, remove this but anyhow what you what you can do is take a punch well let's take a smaller punch And right here, there is a pin that holds this in place, which is the spring here, uh, the hammer spring. And if you depress it by pushing it down, you can then push the pin out. Be careful when it, it comes up and you can remove this. The back strap then can slide off and you can put whatever part you want in. I like that, so when you put this spring back, you wanna make sure to capture that little rod. Uh, the reason I know that is I didn't do it properly the first time. Uh, you wanna make sure that the holes line up, right? And then honestly, I saw some people online, they were using a tool to push this down. I found it just infinitely easier to flip it, you know, push it down and uh, basically just slide the pin into place. So th that's how you change the back strap. And again, um, for me, it, it really did make a, a, a marked difference when, when I put the bigger back strap on as to making the trigger a lot easier to shoot. So th that's kind of important. We had already discussed the, the uh, decocking system. This gun also has a firing pin block in it, so it's safe. Uh, but let's get into the specifications of this gun, and uh, maybe we'll make these back straps go away too. Poof. In regard to the frame, it is a fiberglass reinforced polymer. As we said, it is a double action, single action. So basically that means, uh, and you know what we're going to do so that we don't mess up our firing pin, we're going to actually pop a snap cap in there. So this is now in single action, and you can see it it comes, there's a lot of play. It comes back very far, single action, and <laughs> double action. So, uh, and the double action on this gun is, is a little bit stiff. I'll be curious to see where it comes in. Uh, the gun is in nine millimeter, and it comes in 15 and 10 rounds. Now, there still is the CZ P09F, which is the full size. So basically what they did was they took the CZ P07 and it's gone. Into the mud, scum queen. They now call it as modified the CZ P09C Nocturne and they took the old CZ P09 and call it updated the CZ P09F. Uh, it has a higher capacity than this. Uh, you can buy these guns or you can find them online somewhere around, you know, 500 if you shop, 510. Uh, the full size is going for around 560. Uh, manufacturer's suggested price on the compact is 549. 
Uh, the overall length on this gun is 7.3 inches. The barrel is 3.74 inches. The width on this gun is 1.5 inches. The height is 5.4 inches. And the weight, at least according to the manual, is 26.1. So let's see if they lied to us. Uh, 27.9, so I'm guessing that the magazine, uh, 24.9. All right, so, so it's in the ballpark. You'll also notice that the gun has a uh, milled standard uh, 1913 rail. Um, and as we discussed, the trigger is really Kind of, kind of heavy, but let's take a look at it since, since, we're, since we're weighing and measuring things. All right, we're gonna try the double action, and the double action light on this gun out of the box was just brutal. Uh, the first thing I did was order new springs for it, uh, just because I was, like, I was like, this has gotta be the heaviest double action I've felt in a while. But let's see what it is now after we've shot it a bit. That's really not bad, and this gun has not had any modified spring, so it's 6.6 .6 pounds. Try it one more time. Seven pounds, 15.8 ounces. Eight pounds, 4.1 ounces. It just keeps going around. Try one more, see if it goes to nine. <laughs> So it, it came back down to 6.02. So uh, again, it was super stiff, super stiff out of the box. Um, but shooting it, it, it's really, I mean, it, it's come down quite a bit. Now let, let's try the single action, which I imagine is just really nice and crisp. Two pounds, 10 ounces. Two pounds, 12 ounces. Two pounds, 13.7 ounces. And you know what? We're gonna redo just two pulls on the double action because honestly, I don't know if that's fair. Uh, if you look at where the trigger is, when it's cocked, obviously it comes back, but when you decock it, it doesn't go all the way into the full position. So you're not really having a full double action pull. So you get a, a little bit of a benefit there. So let's just see if that impacts the double action pull at all. Uh, seven pounds, 1.4 ounces. All right, we're gonna decock that. Eight pounds, 1.4 ounces. Okay, so it really doesn't have much of an impact on the actual uh, double action weight required to pull it so much as it does uh, the distance. And let's, let's do an example from this. So if you look right now, the trigger is, is pretty much just a hair south of, of that notch right there. When it goes into single action again, it, it's very far back. So when we double action, falls somewhere in the middle. So, uh, I'm sorry, not when we double action, when we decock it, the double action is no longer up there, it's actually further back. So what that means is you really won't have as long of a double action pull, so it can be much smoother and it's a much easier pull than if it were fully down. And again, just to show you, it's going to be there. A lot easier than doing that that full pull. So I it, it takes a lot more effort when it's in the full frontal position. And uh, let's take a look at the creep on the trigger in in single action. 
So again, it's, it's a lot, oops, it's obviously super easy. Just, sorry, just shot the wall. Um, that's why you always point the gun down range. <laughs> so anyhow, uh, there's a lot of pick up, take up on this and a little bit of creep, right? And then it's a pretty clean, crisp break. One more time. Little bit of creep and really nice crisp break on that. So, um, so let's take a look at the rest. We have uh, a magazine release, which is just on one side, but it can be flipped to the other side. Uh, the decocker is ambidextrous. Uh, I cannot for the life of me do that with my other hand, so we're just gonna do that uh, demonstration there. Uh, the texturing on the gun is really nice. It gives you a great grip, and this pad, honestly, is just about perfect placement for your fingers when you're grasping the gun. So, so the texturing and the ergonomics on this gun are just brilliant. Uh, the, the beaver tail, really nice, got no bite whatsoever when I was shooting it. Uh, the slide, now this is, is new, uh, or at least that's my understanding. I do not have a PO7, so, uh, but my understanding is that the serrations on the front and back, you know, are new. And here we go. Let's let's shoot the snap cap out, <laughs> and uh, and it does make it, you know, much easier to to grasp if you want. Um, we're going to go ahead and put this back in. By the way. The slide is steel, um, and here is the money shot for this gun, right? This is the optics cut. It's also what seems to have been causing a lot of problems, uh, but it's a nice low cut, and uh, you will be able to get a clean co-witness uh, depending on what sites you put on. And, and once we get through the specifics, we'll go through and do a, a listing of the sites that are the optics red dots that should fit on this gun for you. Now, while we're talking about sites, this honestly was uh, one of the negatives about this gun. This, the sights on this gun are luminescent uh, and out of the box, they were really very difficult to see. Um, these type of sights basically need to be charged, if you will. So if you have them in a terribly bright light, they will glow and they will become much easier to see. Right now, they're relatively easy to see in just normal light, but they will not glow. Uh, so what I did was I charged them up, I left them out in the sun, and honestly, uh, the charge was lost after about a couple hours. So. That could be a problem, but again, uh, if you're using the optics, it shouldn't be that bad. In regard to if you don't need the three dot or the luminescence, uh, the sights worked fine. So uh, this is also my understanding, a new slide stop on this particular gun, which is supposed to make the takedown of the gun much easier. Uh, I did not find it much easier to take down, by the way. Uh, and, and it could be just because I, it, I'm starting to learn that this gun, the more that you use it, uh, the softer it shoots, the, the more it becomes broken in. So, so I'd almost say that this CZ definitely does have a break-in period that you, you just have to get used to. But, show you real quick in theory oops, how it's supposed to break down so there is a tiny and again it's empty there is a tiny notch on the top slide and on the bottom and what you are supposed to do is be able to line those up and I'm gonna slide this back because it makes my life easier you can slide that back you come over here and you you push it out. Let's see. Or 
or in my case, you just shoot it across the room. Um, which is why you always point the muzzle of the gun down. No, I'm just kidding. Um, the top slides off, really simple then. But you can kind of see, so this is kind of what CZ is known for. The, the s top slide actually rides inside of the gun. And what that does, in theory, is control the recoil more because it's coming back and your hand is higher on the point where it, it would recoil. So, and then to put it back, which is actually a little trickier than you might think, you just slide this back in. Again, you wanna line it up so that these two notches are lined up. You wanna push this in, and it does take a little bit of a, a juice, if you will, to pop it into place. And then, good as new. So there is one other safety indicator, and this uh, is supposed to give you an idea if the chamber is loaded or not. It's kind of one of the negatives on this gun, and, and there aren't many, but this is one of them. Uh, I will load a snap cap in, and you will see a nominal change in this, right? So right now it's very flush. We'll put that in, and it's still pretty flush. That may pop out a hair, if, if that, right? Um, so I don't know if I would rely particularly on this uh, loaded chamber indicator. I, I would probably want to do a press check um, on the gun just to make sure whether or not there was a, I can't do that from this angle, but you know, around in the chamber, I, I, I probably wouldn't want to just go with this. So in regard to the optics ready portion, what I did and what we will do in a follow up is I have a Hollow Sun uh, 407K. And this footprint is compatible with several different uh, optic footprints. And the main two are the Shield RMSC and the Hollow Sun K footprint. And again, it's a low enough cut and high enough sights that you'll be able to co-witness. And what we're gonna do right now is read off a list of the optics that should work with this. By the way, check and make sure. So if you buy one of these and it doesn't work, uh, send your hate mail to that manufacturer, not me. All right, because I got, I got this list uh, from an optics manufacturer. So it should work with the Hollow Sun 407K, the Hollow Sun 407K Green, the Hollow Sun 507K, the Hollow Sun 507K Green, the Hollow Sun EPS, and yeah, you guessed it, the Hollow Sun EPS Green, the Hollow Sun EPS Carry, and the Hollow Sun EPS Carry Green. The ADA Advanced Optics RD3 018 Spike, the AD. E Advanced Optics RDE3-021 NUA, the J-Point MRD, the Shield SMS, the Shield SMS2, the Shield SMSC, the Shield RMS, the Shield RMS2, the Shield RMSC, the Shield RMSW, and the Shield RMSX, the SIG Romeo Zero, Sightmark Mini Shot A Spec M3, Swamp Fox Sentinel 1x16, UTG OP3 Mini Micro, Vector Optics Frenzy S 1x16x22, Vector Optics Frenzy S 1x17x24 MIC, and last but not least on our list, the Vortex Defender CCW. Uh, again, I got this list offline. That's just to kind of help uh, give you a guide when you're looking for optics for this specific gun. Please, please double check and make sure that they will work and the manufacturer of those specific optics should have um, the information on their specific sites.
So now that we have bored you with a really long list of optics, let's bore you with how bad I shoot. We're gonna take this gun out to the range and see how it performs right now. All right, so the gun actually shot pretty well, and like pretty much every gun we shoot on this channel, uh, it shot a lot better than I did. Um, in regard to the, the double action on this, I genuinely liked it. Um, it was much better than when I started. So, you know, as I said before, uh, when I took it right out of the box, the double action was just scary. Uh, straight out scary, which is one of the reasons I ordered replacement springs for it. Um, the single action was great out of the box, and honestly, the single action was really nice um, when I was shooting it. It was a little uncomfortable because the trigger broke so far back, but I did eventually get used to that. Um, and there was just a, a tiny bit of creep in the single action. Uh, but overall, I mean, I, I really did like this gun. So let's take a look at some of the factors that we're starting to uh, judge the guns on. So ergonomic wise, I would give it you know, a, a five out of five. It was a little bit uh, aggressive on the texturing, but overall it gave me a good grip and it felt very comfortable in my hand. Uh, the trigger, as I said, the double action was good. I assume it's gonna be a lot better when I, when I replace the springs with the springs from Cajun uh, Gunworks. Uh, but the trigger also broke very far back, which took some getting used to. So I'm gonna give the trigger a four out of five. Not, not bad at all, but certainly not the best trigger uh, that I've ever experienced. And certainly uh, not as good as some of the other CZ triggers. This gun is not going to uh, mimic uh, the trigger, for example, on, a, on an SP-01. You, you'll be sorely disappointed if you think that's what you're getting because you're not. Good trigger, but not as good as that gun. Okay, as far as shooting, uh, really liked the way this gun shot. Shot very flat. Uh, the recoil was incredibly uh, manageable, and you, you would kind of expect that given the design of this specific gun. So in regard to how it shot, I'm going to give it 5 out of 5. Uh, in regard to the pricing on the gun, you know, it, it's a quality gun, but, it, but it's certainly not a cheap gun coming in a little bit north of 500, so I'm going to give it 4 out of 5 for the pricing. Uh, and the optics cut, which is really the, uh, you know, the, the big selling point on the, this gun. It's one of the first CZs. Actually, I think it, it yeah, one of, one of the very first CZs that comes with optics cut ready. Um, the optics cut is low, which is a big perk. So that means that you can co-witness. But because it's so low, you have to take care of the screw problem, which we discussed. So we're, we're going to give that four out of five for the optics cut because you may have to modify it and play with it a little, a little bit. Reliability. I had no problems with this gun. So normally I would give it five out of five, but 
because it did give some people some problems until they figured out what was wrong with it, we're gonna give it a four out of five uh, on supervision, right? So if it doesn't get a speeding ticket in the next 120 days, we'll take that away and give it a five out of five. Anyhow, um, while it might seem like, you know, I gave this a few four out of fives instead of five out of fives across the board, I genuinely do <laughs> love this gun. And uh, the proof that I really love this gun is I am probably going to start carrying this gun quite a bit. And if I feel comfortable carrying a gun, that honestly says a lot more about the gun than me giving it a four out of five for pricing. So uh, if you enjoyed this video, learned anything, please comment, please subscribe. Let me know what you think of the gun if you have it. Uh, let me know what you think of the video. See you next time.